Hey, Goodman. A word with you. My respects to you. Do you want something? I do. And you look like the kind of fellow who knows a thing or two and wouldn't mind a bit of work that's not entirely... well... honest. What's it about? I'm looking for someone who knows how to dip her pocket. For a... reward, of course. Well, then it's lucky for you that I happened along. Who do you want me to rob? There's a farmer who lives in the craftsman's yard. He made a killing supplying vegetables to the monastery. I worked for him for a while, but then he threw me out without even paying me for my labour. I'd like you to steal the groschen he owes me. And, also, a pouch containing an amulet he got from the herb woman. He's as superstitious as an old crone, so when he realises he's lost it, he'll have a fit. Sounds easy enough. It ain't quite that easy, otherwise I'd handle it myself. That fucker don't trust no one, and he's always looking over his shoulder. If you manage to nick his pouch and his coin, you can keep the Groshen as a reward. Take care now. Welcome, Henry. I'm glad you're here. The Lord save you. What do you need? I've brought the roan, my lady. That's wonderful. There weren't any problems with it, I hope. Nothing too serious. He's a little wild, but I was able to handle him in the end. Well, that won't do. Sophie can't have some wild horse at her wedding starting a stampede. But I've learnt a trick. If you sing to him, he calms down. You sang to a horse? It's quite true, I'm afraid. I sang to a horse. Well, 
Then you'll have to sing something to me, too. My lady, I, I don't know if I... So I know how to calm down that roan. Go ahead, sing. Um. <coughs> two horses come roaming in the merry month of May. To graze in the shade of the apple tree there. Uh, the first one is brown and the second is grey. Which shall I ride to my maiden so fair? Oh, how beautiful! I'm not surprised the horse calmed down after hearing such a lovely voice. Anyway, I'll think about what to do with the roan. But thank you, Henry. I brought you the crown from the master engraver. Henry, you are a gem. Look at that Moldavite. Isn't it wonderful? Sophie will look like an angel. So, what's next? I brought the wine. Wonderful, wonderful. No wedding is complete without good wine. Find somewhere here to put it down. I'll send for a servant to bring it later. I hope you had no problems acquiring it. Problems? Huh. I don't know the meaning of the word. <laughs> As if I didn't know you. What can I do for you, my lady? Nothing. You've done enough. And now I'd like to reward you. That's not necessary, my lady. You taking the time to see me is reward enough. Come now, Henry. No need for such modesty. I appreciate everything you've done for me. As well as your company. And there's something I'd like to give you. This shirt was my father's. He was built very much like you. Broad shoulders, strong chest. It should fit you just right. But... But I can't accept this. It's too valuable. It's too valuable to be left to the mercy of moths. It doesn't fit my husband well, and I've no one else to give it to. What's more, if you were to leave us again, I'd like you to have something to remember me by, so you don't forget me. I could never forget you, my lady. Well then, won't you try it on at least? What? Right now? Why not? Don't worry, I won't look. I'll turn my back. And what if your husband comes in? He won't. Neither will anyone else. All right, then. Good luck, then. I feel truly blessed to have you here. So long I yearned for young company. I really feel God heard my prayers and sent you to me. Are ready? My, you do look handsome, as fine as any gentleman. When I was a little girl, there were always lots of other children around and young men and women of the court. It was so merry. I always hoped it would be like that when I was grown up too. But it was not God's plan. You and Sir Divish had no children? No. No, alas, we, we were not blessed. Twice I was with child, but they did not live. And now I fear there's no hope for me. My lady. Forgive me, my lady. I, I shouldn't have. I don't mind.
Greetings. What do you need? God save, my lord. I hope things are peaceful in your fiefdom. Peace? Peace is rare in these times. But right now I'm more troubled by politics than warfare. What's wrong? The monastery stalled the purchase of stone and everything connected to the building project. <laughs> and now I find out it's because of the quality of the stone blocks, or so they say. I don't believe a word of it. It looks like profiteering to me. What do they say is wrong with the stone? Supposedly there was an accident when one of the stone blocks broke loose, fell, and killed someone. But the quarry master swears by all the saints it isn't possible. He says he sends only the best stone, and I believe him. He's reliable and an experienced quarry man. Profiteering? What's the monastery trying to accomplish? To lower the price. What else? We've already given them a fair price, and they still delay with payment. Or worse. Worse? You mean they'll stop paying completely? You could put it that way. They're looking for an excuse to back out of the contract and find another quarry where they'll be able to secure a more favorable deal. And is anyone dealing with the problem? Well, my Chamberlain is in charge of it, as always. But all he's done is send them a letter. He says putting more pressure on the monastery could provoke them. Those are his words. So there's nothing else that can be done? I don't know. I've been thinking about taking a more direct approach. But I expect the Chamberlain won't even hear of it. He'll just keep on sending them polite letters and hoping that does the trick. I could help with this. Do you think this is a job for you? You aren't even in my service. I do serve Sir Radzig. He knows he can rely on me when he needs me. And I've never let him down. This is true. So do you want to go to Sassau and ask about the stone? Yes. I'll do it. Good. I'd like you to ask about the stone and keep your ears open. See if they aren't talking about another quarry. I'll do my best. Hopefully they'll talk to me. They will. You ride in my name. So don't forget to remind them of it. Farewell.
someone there. Hey, what are you doing here? Clear off quick, or I'll have you thrown out. What's Who's there? Answer me. Can I take a look inside the monastery? What's got into you, boy? The grounds inside the monastery belong to the monks of the Order of Saint Benedict. No others shall pass. I've been sent here from Talmberg. I'm to speak with the one responsible for construction. That'd be the master builder. Or with our brother, the overseer. What matter is it you're here about? It has to do with the stone for construction. Ah, then that's a matter of supply. You'll want to talk to the Overseer. He knows more about that sort of thing. His study is right above us, more or less. Go up the steps to the left and then head back in this direction, almost the whole way. God be with you.
Good health to you. I've come in the name of Sir Divish. I'd like to have a look around the spot where the accident happened. And why is Sir Divish interested in that regrettable accident? He'd like to know what role the masonry had in it, or at least its quality. I guess it played a crucial role, but I don't intend to stand in the way of your investigation. I've already made sure the poor man was well taken care of, and that's enough for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Who's in charge of purchasing materials for the construction? Mainly it's me. I pay the fees and make arrangements for delivery, but those in charge of the actual building take care of the rest. I'm not knowledgeable when it comes to the quality of stone. They had the red stone delivered from a long way off. They take care of storage as well? Yes, but usually whatever arrives is used up straight away. The construction is in full progress. Do you remember when they brought the last delivery of stone? Yes. It rained a lot that week, so they let the carriage sit right outside of the gate on the other side of the wall. It took some time before it was dry enough for further transport. And there wasn't anything strange about it? A little strange, I suppose. Usually they bring us a large block of stone, which the builders cut to size. But this time it was a number of smaller pieces. No one complained. They probably saw it as less work. I heard that you were late with your payment to the Talmberg Quarry. That's true. We ourselves had late payments, and it took some time before we gathered enough money to pay. But that's happened in the past. Good luck to you. You've got no business here. You're just in the way. God be with you. The overseer sent me. You're to show me the place where the accident happened. <sighs> like I've got time to spare to show you round. He should have done it himself. Why do you want to know, anyway? Because of the Talmberg stone. If they really are delivering poor quality material, then there should be consequences. I'd be interested in what kind. <laughs> But I'm guessing the Overseer likes the idea of cheaper stone, right? And have you noticed anything else going on? Of course. It's a construction site. Things are always going wrong. The men are always complaining and the work isn't being done fast enough. <laughs> so it's just like any other building work? Essentially, yes. 
Occasionally someone brings in bad wood or a man cuts off his thumb and blames it on a bad omen. And then there's all these rumours going round. I'd be interested to know what the men talk about. <sighs> Who's been stealing? Which men from the monastery go to visit women? How the work's going? Normal things. It's only the talk about the curse that's not in the normal run of things. And then there's that devil's skull they dug up. You talked about the Devil's Skull? I did. They say it was found in the hole dug for the foundation of the scaffolding. They moved it so it would do its harm elsewhere. But I wasn't there to see it, so I don't know. And who might know more? Shouldn't you be investigating the stone? Leshek's in charge of the scaffolding, so ask him if you really have to know. He might tell you something. Who's stealing? Could someone be stealing the stone? According to the rumors, everyone from the abbot and the custodian down to the lowest laborer. It's like with whores and dice. There's no protection against slander. And something gets lost here and there, that's true. But nobody stole any stone. There wouldn't be any left if every man here started helping himself, would there? Where's the scene of the accident? It didn't happen on the main site. It was at the outbuilding next to the church, right under the long stairs before the entrance door. Ask my assistant who's in charge there. You'll easily recognize him. He dresses up like he owns the place. Good luck to you.